And before you think we're going to get on here and we're going to freak out, and it's going to be doom and gloom, we're going to play a game. The game is called Ed Knows Ball, Billy Ray Does Not, and we're just going to talk through what this means for the team. We're going to talk through what this means for the rotation, and we're going to we're going to try to figure this out before basketball hits hardwood. So, Ed, welcome. How are you? I'm good. I'm actually uh, I'm handling this better than I anticipated I would. If you had said that Rodney Rice was leaving, uh, I would have told you that my reaction would be really bad. But then when I started to think about it, um, I don't think it's sky is falling territory. You did the the sports center thing there. I think it's mm. more like a Dave Portnoy emergency press conference standing in front of a water cooler. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's definitely a bummer. Uh, I, I don't think this lowers the ceiling of this team at all, in my opinion. I, I really don't. Um, as talented as Rodney is, we saw glimpses of it last year. He's just been like very unfortunate and snake bit in his time in Blacksburg. He had you know, multiple injuries. You get back from an injury, you get hurt again, and then you play, you play pretty well. Um, and then over the summer, you know, it sounded like things were trending in the right direction. And um, who knows what took place behind the scenes, but uh, with with Rodney leaving, you know, we've talked a lot. And Mike and I talked about this on our first episode of Hokie Hoops. This is the deepest roster Mike Young has had. And that doesn't just stay in the front court. That goes for the back court too. Uh, and I actually kind of thought about this last week just on my own, you know, as I sit there and think about Virginia Tech basketball all day long. Um, I was kind of wondering what the rotation was going to look like because it's kind of crowded. You got Sean Padula, who, uh, in my opinion, is an all-ACC caliber guard. You have Hunter Couture coming back, who you know is going to play and play a huge role. Um, those are kind of your one and your two, right? And Rodney Rice is a one or a two. So in terms of a starting rotation, you're not going to not play Sean Padula and you're not going to not play Hunter Couture. Um, you start to think, okay, do you play Couture at the three and Rice at the two? Then you, all of a sudden you're kind of small and you have Couture back guarding the best player on the other team again or guarding someone bigger than him, which is something that I know Mike Young wants to avoid. Uh, in order to keep Hunter fresh throughout the season. So then you think, okay, who's the most natural three on the roster? It's MJ Collins or it's Tyler Nickel. Um, probably Tyler Nickel. MJ's probably a two, three, and Tyler's probably a three who can play the four, and you could even play the two if you really needed him to. Um, so there's just a lot going on in terms of backcourt depth where it, it was hard to see where all these guys were going to get their extensive minutes from. Um, so I kind of wrote it out right before we recorded this emergency press conference. You know, starting point guard is Sean Padula. Without Rodney Rice in the picture, behind him is Hunter Couture. And then you have Brandon Recksteiner, who Tyler Nickel talked to me about on the podcast we recorded last week as someone who stood out to him in camp so far. We've heard nothing but good things about Brandon. So I'm excited about the point guard depth, even with Rodney out of the picture. Um, and then you look at the two. And you have Couture, who's the natural starting shooting guard. And then you have MJ Collins and freshman Jaden Young, who Coach Young has talked highly of both freshmen, Brandon Rex Center and Jaden Young. So that's three playable guys right there. Obviously, you don't want to lean too heavily on the freshman, but with Hunter and MJ ahead of him, you don't have to. And then at the three, you have MJ Collins, Tyler Nichol, and John Camden. So there's a lot of playable guys on this roster who can soften the blow of losing someone with the, with the skill of Rodney Rice. In my opinion, it doesn't lower the ceiling. Um, it's just it's a bummer from a perception perspective. But um, I, you know, wish Rodney well, and hopefully he lands on his feet somewhere. Yeah, I think I think it's worth doing. You know, we're four minutes in here, and people are probably like, "Here comes the sons of Saturday." Sport. Yeah, I was thinking let's, that too. Let's 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 unpack what this does mean from a negative standpoint. Number one, one of the best recruits to ever come to Blacksburg. He played. Let's pull up his totals here. Um, so he played in eight games last season. Uh, he played a total of 161 minutes for Virginia Tech. Obviously, had injury issues. The one thing that jumped off the screen with Rodney Rice, and I said it every single time he played, Virginia Tech has not had an athlete that just looked like he looked on the court ever. I don't think it's insane to say ever, at least as long as I have been watching. Um, so that definitely hurts for me. What do you view this lineup from a ball handler perspective? Because Hunter Couture can bring the ball up the court. It's not necessarily your preference. So what exactly are you doing in terms of a of a ball handling guy? So we're not reliving last year of, hey, Sean Padula, you're going to have to play 36 minutes a night 
and you're going to be the guy that is completely in control of making the entire offense tick. Brian Recksteiner, welcome to the Sean Padula freshman year campaign. Um, when Sean was a true freshman, it was him and Storm Murphy, and now it's going to be Sean Padula as a junior and Brian Recksteiner as a true freshman. Um, you know, that's kind of one of those things where I, I'm not going to sugarcoat it and say that you love that your backup point guard is a true freshman. Um, Rodney Rice, like you just said, barely played last year, so I'm not sure how much experience over Rex Steiner he even had. Um, but, you know, Brandon's a guy who the staff loves. He fits Mike Young's system perfectly. By all accounts, is an incredibly hard worker, and I have no doubt that come conference play, he'll be ready to hold his own as the backup point guard and give Sean the five to eight to ten minutes of break he needs to go. And it's, like you said, it's not just Brandon, it's Hunter. Hunter can give Sean a break too. Um, it, it, it's it, the depth is there. I mean, MJ Collins, not a guy you want being your primary ball handler. He's more dangerous out on the wing as a slasher and a scorer and play really good defense. Um, Tyler nickel can play the two. He's really just a three though, who can score it in a bunch of different ways. So from a, I know the first thing people are going to say when you lose Rodney is, you know, he was the guy who could go get you a bucket. Well, we have another one of those. His name is Tyler nickel. You just haven't seen him play yet. Um, but he is a guy who can go get you a bucket off the dribble and go get his own in the way that Rodney could in the highlights that you'd see from him. Um, but yeah, I, I know the staff doesn't want to overload Sean again, and I don't think they will. I think they'll have a good plan in place and they'll have Brandon Rex Steiner in a spot where he can take the load off as needed throughout the year. Rex Steiner aside, how do you think that this affects MJ Collins minutes? How do you think that this affects Sean Padula's minutes? I mean, to me, this is obviously a Mr. Brightside way of looking at it, but I think it's true. Rodney Rice wasn't in a position where he was going to take Sean Padula's spot. He was a, a step above a nice to have, I think, personally, when you look at the rotation. Um, he was a nice to have that was going to elevate, but it does put guys like MJ Collins, like Rex Steiner, like Long, they're all going to have to play more minutes. Um, how do you see that breaking down? Padula at the one, Couture at the two, Collins at the three. Um, maybe nickel at the three, but I think MJ is probably a step ahead in terms of defensively what Virginia Tech wants to do. Um, but yeah, I mean, like when I broke down those three different spots, the one, two, and the three, um, you know, I had Padula and Couture at the one. And then at the two, I had Couture and MJ. And at the three, I had MJ and nickel. So there's overlap in all three of those spots. And I think that's kind of by design. Um, in some ways, it might clear the picture up and make your lineup look like a more natural, traditional one, two, and three because Couture and Rice on the floor together with Padula, you don't have a natural small forward there. You have two shooting guards and a point guard. Um, so in some ways it might clear the picture up a little bit and make things look more natural, uh, especially from a defensive perspective. I think that actually could be somewhat of a helping mechanism. I think where it scares me the most is backing up Padula, um, giving him a break. That's where I'm most concerned. But I again, I've heard nothing but good things about Brandon Recksteiner all off season. Uh, even back to when he committed here, just how hard of a worker he is and how good he is and he fits what we want to do. So I think he'll be in a position to play as a freshman um, and fill that role that is the most important one, in my in my opinion, in the backcourt is giving Sean Padula a break. In summation, if you had to sum this up in two sentences, sum it up in two sentences. Hmm. The ceiling is the same. We'll be okay. <laughs> I don't know. I, I yeah. it's hard. Like it, Rodney was so talented, and we saw glimpses of it. But again, you know, you go back through it, it's his time in Blacksburg, just very snake bit, um, and things just did not work out for him here. And that's super unfortunate. And you hate it when guys who are like you said, like one of the top rated recruits in program history, come in and don't find success. Mm -hmm. um, that's not something you want to stack on top of each other over and over again. Um, but again, you got guys like Sean Padula who were not as highly touted, who are 15 point per game as, as a true sophomore last year in the ACC. So there's a lot of talent on this team, both in the back and the front court. Um, albeit it's a very talented piece you're losing, but it is just one piece. And um, there's a lot of guys who are going to be able to pick up the slack, in my opinion. Man, I'm glad Hunter Couture's back. I will say that. Yeah. No, I think, I mean, you can go back and you can look at it in the middle of that stretch last year. Um, Hunter Couture goes down against Boston College. Virginia Tech loses seven games in a row. So, I mean, from a 
from a standpoint of knowing who you have, at least injuries aside, um, I suppose that helps because you're not going to be in a position where you're asking Rex Steiner, hey, we're actually going to need you to play, you know, five to eight minutes. Uh, and you need to start doing that in the middle of ACC play. So at the end of the day, it's not something that you absolutely that, that you're fired up about. Um, but, you know, wishing wishing Mr. Rice absolutely the best in whatever he decides to do next. He's an extremely, extremely talented young young man. Um, and uh, wherever he goes, they're going to be getting a really, really good basketball player. And from our side, you know, the we're going to be leaning on some young guys. Older guys going to have to step up and kind of show them the ropes a little bit. But um, that's 11 minutes. Any any closing thoughts here? No, I think we hit on all of it. It's a bummer, but uh, there's still a lot of a lot of good basketball players in that building. So um, if you're going to like you kind of just alluded to, if, it, if this is going to happen, happening before the season, before you have roster rotations and things figured out, is the time you, I guess, in theory, want it to happen. Um, but it, it's definitely a bummer. All the best to Rodney, but I, I think the Hokies will be in a good spot. Season's right around the corner. Let's get after it. Hokey Hoops every week with Ed Williams. No ads. It's only 10 minutes. We didn't want to bog you down, but shout out to all of our sponsors, and we will talk to you again soon. Go Hokies.